You probably already heard this week that Climeworks raised $600 million to build out their fleet of direct air capture machines to suck carbon from the sky. That is so cool to hear about. That, that level of funding for direct air capture, for carbon removal broadly is, it's unprecedented. Uh, it's putting us on track for a billion dollars of, of, of venture and investments going into carbon removal this year. Uh, and the thing is, that is the tip of the iceberg. Here's that, here's that cover from, from Wired, the big inhale, uh, you know, in, inhaling some cash. <laughs> um, the thing is, that's the tip of the iceberg though. Climeworks started uh, nearly a decade ago. And so they have just been pushing and innovating and leading the way in terms of carbon removal. And what I want to do, I want to, I want to show you what the base of the iceberg looks like. So I get to see this stuff uh, every day in, in airliners uh, through the airliners uh, Slack channel. Uh, and I want to dive in and just show you, here's some stuff that's happening at the base of the iceberg in terms of getting to gigaton scale carbon dioxide removal. So let me see if I can share my screen. We'll just pop over into in Slack. Here we are. So this is uh, this is dots. It's uh, something Jason and I use to keep track of kind of the, the stuff that pops up on on Airmar's Slack that gets extra attention. Uh, and so I've just got about five things here that I wanted to wanted to bring attention to. Uh, Madison was writing on women airminers, asking, "Does anybody have a breakdown of uh, men and women in carbon tech or, or carbon removal or, or clean tech more broadly?" Uh, and this turned to this whole thread talking about, "Hey, let's do a survey." Uh, and so what I love about this is that, you know, it's this sort of organic, like, let's figure out how to solve for something. Let's figure out we don't have the data. Let's go do a survey. Let's go figure out how to get it. Uh, and it's that sort of enthusiasm and kind of action-oriented nature that's really, that's what the base of the, of the what do we call it, base of the iceberg is all about. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit, um, what else popped up? Oh, Delaney and the Foundation for Climate Restoration published this uh, uh, overview of, of direct air capture. And what was cool about this, you should check it out, but what was cool about it was, or what stood out to me about it, what's kind of this like base of the, of the iceberg thing, is that you got Jason, Quincy, and Erica who had weighed in on reviews and you know giving insights on this. And that's something just I wanted to, to draw attention to uh, because it's such an important part of that, that base of the, of the iceberg. It's also uh, Anjali talked about the circular carbon network. They have their state of the market report. And you know, similarly, this is something that this takes effort from not just the, the people that kind of publish the report, but all the reviewers, all the people that are interviewed, all the people that are contributing data. Um, and so you know, next time you see a project like this come up, uh, you might hear about it in your email, somebody saying, hey, I'm putting together a report like this, and I'd love it if we could chat for a few minutes, or, you know, I'm, I'm putting together a report, would you do the survey? That's what the base of the, of the iceberg looks like, is it's, it's you know, it's, it's collaborating with other people that are working on carbon rural solutions, and I love, you know, what, what's coming out from Circular Carbon Network and um, Foundation for Climate Restoration. One of the challenges, though, with reports is uh, that reports can often be kind of these, like, dust collectors in the sense that you can write a report and, and nobody really reads it, right? And so what I love about uh, what both these organizations have done is they've leaned into, you know, a report is kind of a, 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 an artifact of, of research and, uh, and, and work, but then they've also created a, an event series uh, in the case of uh, Foundation for Climate Restoration. And Anjali is gonna be coming to the airliners to, to talk about the report that uh, the Circular Carbon Network put together. And to me, that's like so important because being able to engage with, being able to, to talk about this stuff, ask questions, uh, create new kind of insights from, uh, from this research, that's, that's key, right? Whether it's YouTube videos or memes or just kind of a, a Q&A back and forth in a discussion, that's the type of thing that transforms, you know, something like an IPCC report that's super dense, super dry, that's what transforms it into action and how, you know, how do we do this to solve for it? All that kind of stuff. And again, that's what the base of the pyramid is about. And it leads to, like I said, it leads to big outcomes. Uh, it's just that they're further down the road and it's important to, to keep an eye on what that, what that base looks like and, um, and, uh, and, and work on it from there. Um, 
let's see what else is here Nisha's working on a podcast um that's interesting Noi is hiring um oh I mean just one last note is like I, I mentioned memes like again this idea is impossible and necessary is you know some days it just sucks some days you wake up and you're working on carbon removal and that whole impossible piece just won't get out of your way uh and and that's where you know the memes channel i think is 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 super key for that jack sullivan posted this one about about cats um air miners cat meme uh, <laughs> and so you know being able to 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 communicate about this stuff memes are so important for carbon removal because it's this big invisible challenge it's invisible gas a trillion tons what even is a trillion right and the more we can use memes and kind of other tools and when i say memes here i do mean like images with with writing on them it's just such a powerful way to kind of break apart some some bigger concepts or bigger ideas that that may be hard to uh hard to digest uh, and i know even even my own understanding of carbon removal has been significantly moved forward by the by the memes channel just something about being able to take a, a complex idea and and transform it um so you know that's what the base of the iceberg looks like to me again we're starting to see the tip of the iceberg as as companies that have been leading in carbon removal for a long time really get global attention uh, and there's there's you know getting to gigaton scale carbon removal means we need to move the whole thing forward we need uh, hundreds of, of, of solutions towards pulling carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And that's, that's what it looks like. It's happening in the air mine. It's everything from creating reports to engaging people on how to, you know, what, what it means uh, to doing new surveys, finding new data uh, and creating memes. So if you haven't checked these out, I'll include links uh, below, but uh, you know, dive in and, and next time you see something else come up, uh, you know, feel free to feel free to dive into that. I had one other note on this. Um, oh yeah, you know, part of this is, is about discourse, right? Part of this is not just publishing a report. It's not a one-way thing. It's, it's you publish it and then you engage, right? And that's what Laney and Anjali are doing is they're, they're putting this out there and then they're, they're having this discourse uh, and talking about this. And that's something I had written Stuart Brand uh, two years ago where I had, I had sent an email about carbon removal. Like it's got a ton of, uh, it got a ton of response and it was some was positive some was negative and I was I was writing him I was just like what, what what's your read on this am I am I doing something wrong and what he said was he wrote and just said you know strong statements in response to yours are a good sign they are public discourse in action and so the more you can push yourself to just you know get out there if, you're, if you see something cool in the news maybe you saw the article about Climeworks raising 600 million dollars you know when you when you share that share your perspective share you know here's what here's I wish I had six hundred million dollars or something like that right it can be really simple it can be funny it can also be kind of kind of questioning right like well what are they going to do with this six hundred million dollars how many director captured machines does that does that build if they're 10 million a piece how much carbon is going to go through those machines over the next 10 years stuff like that it can be it can be just observations it can be perspectives it can be you know critiques are fine too um, but ultimately, like the, the nature of the unknown in carbon removal is so, so, so big that, you know, if you're taking the time to read an article and to share it, please add your context, add, you know, I, I didn't understand this, or, or I liked how they explained that, or shit, I like the logo of the company, right? I mean, that sort of public discourse is, is what happens on Amazon. It's so necessary for getting to gigaton scale carbon removal.